can i admit everybody Oh, in here. I see six, seven, eight. Yeah. That's enough. Ready? Okay. I think we're ready. So um, I'll call this meeting to order. We've got people online. We've got people in the gym. So um, this is our first attempt at a hybrid meeting. So please be kind. Uh, there will probably be glitches. Things will go wrong and, and let us know and we'll just do our best. Um, so for those of you who haven't seen or met me before, my name is Susan Hawes. Um, I'm the parent of a sophomore. I also have a student who graduated in the class of 2020 and I'm this year's PTO president. Um, let's see. Oh, can you turn the slide back one? Yeah. That's okay. There's, there's our glitch. See, we're done. That happened. There we go. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is a quick perusal of the minutes from the October meeting. So uh, Michelle Farrell is running our text, so she's going to pull those up. You'll have a couple minutes to look at them on your screen at home or on your screen here. And then we'll vote to approve them, or we'll vote on them. We hope to approve them. Hello, Susan. Yes. Yes, I'm here. There we go. Okay. See, I told you we'd have glitches. So um, I would like to propose a motion to approve the minutes from October. Uh, will somebody second? Okay. Mala Gupta and Georgie Silverman here in the room uh, second. So if you're home online, please use your raise your hand icon. If you're here in the room, please just raise your hand. Vote aye to approve the minutes. And any votes for not approving the minutes? Any votes nay? And any abstentions? I don't see any. You don't see any, Michelle? Okay, motion passes. So we will next move to our principal's report. Uh, those of us in this room, some of us haven't seen Mr. Moss in person in a long time. Welcome back to this podium. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining us, whether in person or virtually at home. We appreciate that. Uh, just very quickly, I wanted to give you just a few updates regarding the school. Um, you may be familiar with House Bill 4545. And as it relates, or relates to Carnegie, we do have uh, some students that for various reasons did not take portions of the state test last year. Um, of course, you know, during the pandemic, we had probably the majority of students um, virtually at home. Um, we will be meeting probably via phone call with about 126 current freshmen. 
um, in regards to uh, the issue of, once again, House Bill 4545 and preparing them for upcoming tests. For those students who actually did take Algebra 1 in eighth grade or prior, um, part of the conversation will revolve around that. There is a December test date, and I don't remember the exact date. I believe it's either December 7th, 8th, or 9th in regards to that Algebra 1 test. So anyway, you'll get more clarity when our personnel um, schedule to contact you. And once again, we have about 126 of our current freshmen that we will be reaching out to. We just completed the first week of cycle three. As you know, there are six weeks in every cycle. Um, cycle three is actually just a, a little bit odd. There are five instructional weeks and then basically almost one week of finals. So um, now that we are, well, let me back up a little bit. Last Friday, November the 12th was the end of cycle two and you can expect report cards to be available tomorrow. Um, most of you are probably accustomed to logging on and um, to the grade speed or uh, the grade book and, and seeing the report cards there. So be on the lookout for that. When we return from Thanksgiving week, we actually have three instructional weeks in December prior to winter break. And then when we return in January, there's one more week of instruction and then one more day, and then we have four days of finals. Those four days are Tuesday through Friday, that's January 11th through the 14th. And the last final, there are two finals every day, starting at 8.30, uh, the first one lasts until 10.30. There's a 10 minute break or transition uh, before the second period exam or the second set of exams. Um, and then those are from 10.40 to 12.40. We do provide a 30 minute lunch, but students are eligible to be picked up starting at 1240. Uh, if we have any students who are uh, using HIZ transportation, those buses will depart between 110 and 117 p.m. Um, so in a nutshell, that's all the information I wanted to share uh, with you. If anyone has any inquiries, you are welcome to email me at rmoss at houstonisd.org or cvhs at houstonisd.org. I'm sorry, cvhs, I think it's a .com, but anyway, it's located on our school website, <laughs> carnegievanguard.com for sure. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you never send yourself an email, right? So why would you remember that? So um, the next couple items of business, you may hear more than once because they're all about money. And so we find that that's important to repeat so folks will remember it. Um, I can talk a little bit about uh, some things that are not on the agenda. We had a wonderful social event last Thursday night at, um, what was it? The East Side, yeah, East, East Side, Kirby Ice House on East Side. I kept wanting to call it East Ciders because that's what they serve, but mm -hmm. that was wrong. Um, about, what did we gather? About 75, 80 people came and uh, we had dessert. There was a food truck that folks could buy what they wanted to eat. And there was a bar where the folks could buy what they wanted to drink and we got the space for free so we didn't have to have a cover charge. So hopefully we'll be going back there for more social events. And uh, the weather we ordered came up just in time. It was a perfect night. Um, let's see, there, I was asked to report on behalf of Danielle Batchelor, who is our HISD watcher. And she says she has nothing to report this month. Um, there will be, uh, she typically watches the HISD board meetings for us so she can report back and thought there was nothing that directly touched Carnegie that she hasn't already talked about. Um, you will hear this again. We have one more night of auction at last week's party. We ran a raffle for a reserved parking space and there is still an auction for a reserved parking space going on. So if you didn't get it for a couple dollars, you can buy it now or you can win the bid. And what happens there is your student gets a nameplate in the lower 
parking garage, which is usually where the teachers park and students are not allowed to park there. So it's out of the weather, out of the rain, and it's reserved for them with their name on it. So if that's something your student you. would appreciate, you've got one more chance. Um, I was also asked to report, I'll leave the hope for a donor match to Joya Shukla, who will speak in a minute. But um, Jackie Rincon, our store manager, asked me to report that there are there's new merchandise in the school store, including a track jacket and dry fit shirts. And it has not, uh, it hasn't arrived yet that she is taking pre-orders. Oh. <laughs> Joya is reminding me that the parking space is not necessarily just for students. I know the year that my son had the reserved parking space, he parked over by the theater like he always did. And the person who used his parking space was me. And I appreciated it very much. Um, so school store new merchandise, we've got it. Um, it will be coming in and there's order forms on the website. There's order forms on our Facebook feed. Uh, that is all I can think of right now in terms of new news. So uh, Bala, would you please come and let us know how we're doing for money? Hi everyone, this is Mala Gupta, ETO treasurer for year 21-22. I'm a sophomore parent here. So yeah, so as you all can see the financial statements from June 1 to October 31st, that is being projected on the screen. I'll give you all a minute to look. A little smaller than I am. This is from uh, June 1st to October 21st for the year 21 22. Yes, it will be posted on the website after tonight. So any questions uh, regarding these financial statements can be sent to me at treasurer at cvhspto.org and I will be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Um, so now over to our friends and family campaign. Um, our friends and family campaign is at 70%, which is $32,000. Thanks to our wonderful and generous community for their contribution and support. All the money given to CEO is spent entirely towards supporting our school. I know it's dark right now, and tomorrow we'll please take a look at our beautifully renovated library windows, one of the PTO project that was just finished. And at the beginning of school year, PTO also purchased commercial grade air purifiers for the lab. We just approved a grant for dance team for matching costumes and supplies. Baseball field leveling work is still undergoing and the list is keep on going. Today only our wonderful teachers and staff <laughs> were given a scrumptious lunch from local foods. I, mean, I will not take much of your time, but this list is really long. We have few requests for future projects. To mention a couple, there is a repair request to fix theater stage. And also we need to support our newly formed girls basketball team. Please donate generously to help your school PTO accomplish all this and many more. Another support opportunity is donating by Amazon. During Black Friday shopping, please activate Carnegie as your preferred charity in Amazon Smile. It is done by just a few clicks. Today only I just showed my sister how to do this. I mean, she was not even giving to any charity. So might as well give to Carnegie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, I didn't even notice this, but please, those who have already uh, uh, selected Carnegie as their preferred charity, please keep on renewing the account because every six months you have to renew the charity. Otherwise, it just falls off the list, which is something even I didn't know. Um, now, just a small report on our false social. I'm, I, I will talk about numbers only. We raised about $1,405 just by selling the parking raffle tickets. 
and auction is still going on, closing tomorrow. The, the parking spot is, uh, the bid for the parking spot, last I checked, was set at $560. And there is a buy now price also right there, which is, I think, about $1,000. And again, this parking spot can be used for the entire family, not just by student. So parents, students, anybody, or maybe friends, if the parents <laughs> allow. So, yeah, so that's from my end. Thank you so much for listening. And over to okay, Susan. To Joya. Oh, over to Joya. Uh, Mike, there she is. Welcome to Joya Shipwood with our fundraising VP. Welcome, welcome, Joya. I, I'm not sure if you can see me or not. Probably better if you if you can't. But um, any rate, um, wanted to just again thank everyone. Wanted to really acknowledge um, Jamie and Kelly and everybody that put so much effort and helped pull off the fundraising slash social event. Um, we uh, again, as as the last couple of people mentioned, we raised over fourteen hundred dollars on the auction. Sorry for the raffle. Um, it was our first time raffling a parking spot. So we keep trying to innovate and do uh, new things. Um, again, the auction closes Friday. I hope to have a great turnout for that. Um, but in terms of uh, trying to innovate and do things different, um, I thought it would be amazing if uh, on Giving Tuesday, um, if we could perhaps find a family or a business in the area. I am looking, I am asking, I haven't landed anyone yet. I do have a few leads, but I would be grateful for your help in sharing your networks. But it would be absolutely marvelous to have someone do a dollar for dollar match just as an incentive for that one day giving Tuesday. So if you know any parent or someone in the CVHS community donated a dollar, if we could have someone to match a dollar, um, again, I think it would be just a really fun way to be grateful, um, you know, after Thanksgiving and before we all start splurging for the holidays, just to take a pause and uh, on Giving Tuesday, um, just see if there's someone out there that can help with that. Um, if you have any ideas, feel free to reach out to Mala or Susan or myself or even Georgie. Um, again, with that coming up really soon, we have a very short window. Um, and in return for uh, finding a match, we would give them publicity on, you know, the CVHS website and Facebook, um, you know, again, would be great to find a, a match sponsor for that day um, to cap how much, you know, they are willing to match. We can uh, work with them to, you know, set a limit of like the first $5,000 or, you know, find what may work with them. But the key thing would be finding a match. Um, so really, please put your, you know, thinking caps on, as they used to say when I was in grade school. And if you've got any ideas, just throw them your way. If you throw them your way, I promise you I'll chase up on them and see if we can find someone. So um, moving on, the, we'll be doing a um, social with uh, Principal Moss um, for the uh, higher end, for the people that qualify for the, you know, the, the larger donors and uh, giving out swag bags and organizing that here in the next few weeks. Um, and looking further than that, I'll be working with Georgie to set up a, a sign up genius. Um, we are looking to have a 20th anniversary celebration and um, would like to um, have as many people as you would like to volunteer. There will be some way to fit you in. Um, again, when you're trying to do something that covers 20 years, uh, it will be a, a very dedicated effort from a larger group of people. Um, and finally, uh, one of the things that we would like to do with this 20th anniversary is to engage alumni of the 20 years. So if you have friends or family or know people, I know I'm, I'm working with Susan to 
um, she's got a team that's going to try to get LinkedIn. Um, if you do a LinkedIn search, you know, with Carnegie Vanguard High School, there's hundreds of people that come up. We would like, love to connect and form a community. Um, really long-term benefits of that isn't just the fundraising, but you know, when our kids are applying to college to find an alumni or when they're looking for summer internships, or um, you know, if you think about the quality of the kids the school puts out, there's just lots of opportunities out there. Um, we're, we're also going to be looking through past yearbooks and try to um, you know, invite officers from past years and see if they can help connect those years. So again, tons of ways for you to give of your time, talent, or treasure. But the immediate ask is to see if anyone has any ideas on a match for Giving Tuesday. So uh, with that, I'll turn it back to Susan. Thank you, Joanne. Okay. Thanks, Joanne. And um, I'd actually like to recognize somebody who's in the room. Joe, stand up and introduce yourself, please. Um, our new alumni team. I'm putting you on the spot here, very much so. Hi, this is Adam. Uh, and uh, this is uh, Ashish Mohan. And both of us are trying to help with this alumni initiative. Now I'm back where I can be seen. They were right in front of me, 20 feet away. So I just had to put them on the spot. We met yesterday. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, we flipped. Uh, all right, Maria, are you ready to talk about communications and IT? Yes. Hi. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us via Zoom or Facebook or in person. I'm sorry that I couldn't be there um, in person. Um, I just want to remind everybody that uh, regardless of where you are, um, you can go to our uh, main page for one stop uh, in order to find everything you need um, if you want to keep up or if you're wondering what's going on with the PTO. Um, if you go to our landing page, which is demonstrated here, you can find um, how to sign up for the newsletter, how to get with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, our link tree or Padlet. Um, we're going to post all of this information uh, from this meeting on the face, uh, I'm sorry, on our website uh, after the meeting. So um, our uh, agenda will be um, posted with live links, all of this If you're interested in getting in on the communications committee so that you can help out with um, any of these um, uh, projects, either uh, particularly on the newsletter, um, we meet once a week uh, for a short meeting on Wednesday evenings online via Zoom. Um, that is um, every Wednesday, 8 p.m., except for um, some exceptions. You can find our meeting schedule also on the website, um, or if you're subscribed to the calendar, and um, the information should be right there on the agenda. Um, so if you don't want to uh, decide now or uh, sign up as an official committee member, you want to check it out, um, pop in um, 8 p.m. Wednesday. We're very informal. Um, and if you want to see what it's about and see whether or not you want to help out on our committee, um, you're more than welcome to join us. And that is all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for taking the time, Maria. I know you've got a very, very busy night. Georgie, are you ready? Okay, Georgie Silverman, our volunteer VP, will tell, talk to you next. Okay, great. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Georgie Silverman. I'm the Vice President of Volunteers. Can everybody hear me okay? Am I talking into the mic? Okay, um, so we just sent out the Sign Up Genius for Thanksgiving, for Thanksgiving baskets. Ooh. All right, so um, I thank you so much. The parents were very generous. It was short notice. Everybody really helped out and uh, donated, and I really appreciate that. 
Um, I would like to thank, and I'm blanking on her name because I'm kind of nervous, the volunteer who um, Susan coordinated all the- Jennifer Claridge. Jennifer Claridge had sophomore stepped up, sophomore parent, to, um, to handle all of the uh, ways that we look out for students in need. And that's one of the ways, by sending home baskets on Thanksgiving and also on Christmas. So be sure to look in your email for a sign of genius that will look a lot like the Thanksgiving basket <laughs> sign of genius, but it will have Christmas and holiday decorations on it. And that's the holiday basket that we send home um, at the end of the, uh, this, right, the Friday before we dismiss for the um, holidays. So also um, we're gonna need chaperones for a movie night that's coming up, I believe, December 4th. Saturday, December 4th, there's going to be a movie night, which is a lot of fun. We've been doing them since the, I'll let Jamie talk probably more about that, but we've been doing them since um, COVID. We do them outside, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, also, uh, we are, so there'll be a sign-up genius for that. Um, we do have, I believe, a class parent for the junior class that I just talked to today. There might be two or three of them, so I don't think I need to talk about that. Um, so I, I believe the one other thing that Susan wanted me to talk about, was, oh, one thing we do at Carnegie is we do um, gift cards for the teachers. The parents donate gift cards of all varieties. We put them in a big box and they draw them at random during their holiday party. And then they trade them off because someone likes someone else's gift card better. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. The teachers have a lot of fun with it. So when you see a, uh, that sign of genius, be sure to um, give, the, uh, cards or cards, multiple cards for the parents. They're usually in low amounts, I think being, we usually do between 15 and $25. Um, so um, thank you so much. I think that's all for me. And thanks again to all the people who volunteered. Thank you, Georgie. Um, Jamie Turner, our special events VP will be next. And then we will hand it over to the person you're really here to see. Mr. Rosa, who will talk to you about financial aid, a topic near to everyone's heart. <laughs> Good evening, CVHS. My name is Jamie Turner. I am the VP of Special Events and Programs. I am the one that um, loves to have your kids out for things like movie night. And you can't hear me? Okay, and so I am the one that loves to have your kids out for events like movie night. So we have an event. I'm going to first talk about the fall social. The fall social, you just missed it. If you were not there, we do not get to have another time like that until the spring. But let me tell you about the one you missed if you weren't there. It was at Kirby Ice House. And nearly 65 parents RSVP. We did not have that many show up because of Houston traffic. I blame it solely on the city and not on us. <laughs> but once we did arrive, we had free Crave cupcakes. We had great conversation about our students' experiences. And we had a lot of agreement on how fabulous Mr. Moss is. So it was an awesome, awesome night. I am so grateful that we had the opportunity. I thank all of the parents that did come out because I know it wasn't easy. Those of you that did not um, get to come out and experience it, we'll do it again in the spring. The events though that happen in between now and the spring will be solely for our students. So the next one is on the 4th of December, right after break. It will be an outdoor movie night. It will be for the entire school and it will be on the rooftop in the evening at dark. So it's an awesome time because they get to enjoy good food. It won't be pizza this time, I promise. They get to enjoy good food. They get to enjoy each other, meet you know one another because they're not, they don't get that time during the day as much. And so I will do that December 4th. After that, there is the snow cold dance. The snow cold dance is not hosted by me. It is gonna be hosted by the volleyball team and Coach Scott. So you're gonna hear more about that from them, but that is something I know our students are looking forward to. It is December 17th. It's also gonna be in the evening. So please mark your calendars for those two dates in December. It's important our students are there. They need that mentally and socially. All right, well, that's all I have for you. I'll be back again in January. 
or I mean in December to talk about January. And um, thank you so much for coming out, those of you that are here. And thank you for signing in, those of you that are online. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. You are doing a great job with social events. Okay, we will hand it over to Mr. Rosa. Mr. Donovan Rosa is Carnegie's college coordinator. Did I get that right? College and Career Readiness Advisor. Okay, College and Career Readiness Advisor. He, uh, we have to share him with a couple of other schools, DeBakey and PVA, am I right? Correct. So, uh, so we don't get him full-time, but he made time for us tonight and we're very thankful. And here he is. You. you can take your mask off if you want. Thank you. I, I appreciate the introduction. Um, so I have a presentation. I actually did a uh, financial aid workshop at the end of August, sorry, at the end of October. Um, so this is basically the same presentation without the actual workshop part. Um, so we're going to quickly run through it. We'll save a few minutes at the end for just a few questions and anything that is left over in terms of questions you guys can email to me. Um, so we're going to talk about the FAFSA. So there's three main applications that students um, could potentially fill out. Um, really two, because um, you will either do one or the other for the ones I'm about to talk about, and then CSS profile is pretty much for everybody. Uh, but we'll start with FAFSA first. Um, so every year in October, the very first day of October, financial aid opens up, whether it be FAFSA or CAFSA. So that's the earliest that you can fill it out. Um, and it stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And as it sounds, it qualifies you for federal money. Um, that's the big, the big government. Um, but you can also qualify for state and institutional aid as well through it. Um, and it's typically used to attend colleges throughout the United States. Um, and it's solely accessed online via the studentaid.gov website. Um, and then the opposite side is, is gonna be the TAFSA. So you're either gonna fill out FAFSA or you're gonna fill out TAFSA, you, you cannot fill out both. Uh, TAFSA stands for Texas Application for State Financial Aid. Um, to give you the synopsis, it's for students who are undocumented um, and it's a way for them to get money to attend school inside the state. Um, so they wouldn't be able to use the funds from TAFSA to go to NYU, for example, right? They would have to do public schools in Texas, uh, and it's not all public schools in Texas. Um, so you would have to uh, look at the website and see what schools are accepting it. Um, and something that's different about uh, TAFSA is that it's completely paper. So a few schools do have the e-TAFSA, but if you're filling it out for multiple schools, it, it just makes sense to keep it all on paper. That way you can just make copies of the forms. You don't need to fill out multiple forms and you can just mail it off to the schools um, as you complete it. Um, and this is where it can be accessed at. Again, there is a PDF for it and I included the bit.ly here. Um, and you guys are welcome to send this PowerPoint out to the families that are here in attendance as well. Um, so they have an English version or a Spanish version as, as a barrier uh, that prevents a lot of families from completing this is the language. So they did include a Spanish version as well for those families that need it. Um, you can move to the next slide. Um, so we'll, we'll go back for a second. We'll talk about the steps for the FAFSA, and then we'll go and talk about the, the steps for the TAFSA so that you guys know what those are now. Now it makes sense in the context. So to start off for the FAFSA, the first thing that you're going to have to do is you're actually going to have to go to the studentaid.gov website and create an FSA ID. That is essentially the login for FAFSA. Your student will need their own, and you will need your own. Um, once you've created both of those access accounts, you can log in using your student's login to the FAFSA website, and you can begin the FAFSA that way. Note that if the parent doesn't have a social security number, which can be the case for some of our students, they may have been born in the United States, but maybe their parents are not US citizens. If that's the case and they don't possess a social security number, they don't need to create an FSA ID, just their student will need one. And when you get to that portion where they're gonna ask for the parent's social security number, or the parent's FSA ID login, there's just a different step that you're going to take. It's not going to prevent the student from getting money. Um, it's just a different step that you have to take. Um, and uh, for when it does ask for the parent's social security number, you do want to make sure you put all zeros. You may get an error message from the FAFSA that says, hey, you're putting all zeros. Are you sure that this is the right thing? You're just going to ignore the message, continue to put the all zeros and proceed towards this uh, confirmation page. Um, so in order for you to actually fill out the FAFSA, there's a couple of things that you're going to need, mainly tax related stuff. So you have to gather all your 2020 tax information. So that's going to be your 1040s, uh, any statements of any untaxed income, any statements of any assets that you possess, any additional homes, uh, things like that are all going to be information that you want to gather prior to actually filling out the actual FAFSA. Um, and again, you'll log in to the student aid website, you'll begin the FAFSA. 
Um, at the very, very end, the last thing that you're going to have to do is you're actually going to have to sign. Um, so your FSA ID, not only does it function as a login, it actually functions as a digital signature. So your student will sign using their, di their digital signature. That'll be their FAFSA login. And then the parent will sign using the one that they created. But wait, Mr. Rosa, what if my parent didn't create one because they don't have an FSA ID? What you'll do instead is you'll actually print out that signature page for the parent. You'll physically sign it, and then there'll be an address on the bottom of that form that you can drop in an envelope and mail it off to the, the wonderful folks at um, the federal student government. Um, and that'll be the way that they get past it. So for parents who don't have that social security number, there is a little bit more of a window of where you're waiting for your FAFSA to be processed because of that signature page. But again, I assure you that it's not going to stop you from getting the money. Um, as long as you are filling it out in a reasonable amount of time, you should qualify for the money that you qualify for and you should receive it. No, it's okay. All right, so more on FAFSA. So I wanna talk about this really cool tool that most people can utilize on the FAFSA and it'll, it'll help with a later step and it actually help to speed things up as well when you're filling out the FAFSA. So there's a tool called the IRS Data Retrieval Tool. It is the IRS that uses it. Um, so when you're filling out the parent's financial information, you'll actually be able to log into the IRS website using your FSA ID because your social security number is connected to your FSA ID and they'll be able to actually pull your financial information off from the IRS website and auto populate it in the FAFSA for you. What that does is it saves you a bunch of time with having to go through the actual tax document and fill it out, but it also does a good job of stopping you from being asked for verification. Now it's not a fail safe. You could still potentially be asked for verification, which is just them verifying your information by pretty much asking you to submit some documents to the colleges that can be copies of your W-2s. Uh, it can be copies of any income that's untaxed. Um, but that's basically what, ver what verification is. However, there are a few things that will prevent families from being able to successfully link their IRS information to the FAFSA. One of them is going to be not having that social security number. But then I also listed a bunch of reasons here. We don't have to get into them because it'll take a lot of time to do it. But you you'll know if you if you qualify for it because you're the person that actually did the did the taxes. Um, so you'll have a better sense of how you filed, if you've made any amendments. Um, students sometimes have a harder time being able to put their finger on that. But parents, because they're filling out the taxes, they usually have a good sense of what's going on with the taxes. Um, you can move forward. So now to talk about the TAFSA. Um, so you'll print out and fill out the TAFSA form. Um, it's about six pages long. Um, it asks for pretty much a lot of the same information that the FAFSA is going to ask you for, except that you got to actually write it in. It's not something that you can digitally type up. There is no uh, way for you to link the IRS to the TAFSA. Um, but from the parents, they're going to need to have W-2s, um, any copies of their tax returns. Um, you'll have to actually request a tax transcript from the IRS because they're actually going to re require that. Um, and then you'll actually have to do a verification worksheet for any income that was untaxed, especially if you did not make a certain amount of money um, and you're not required legally to file your taxes. The schools are going to ask for proof of that. Um, for the student, a lot of the things are the same, but some things that I kind of want to draw attention to is going to be the notarized affidavit. So the affidavit is a sworn statement, and I actually have um, a bit.ly that I'm going to show you guys in just a sec where you guys can actually access an affidavit. But basically, it's a sworn statement saying that, hey, as a student, I plan to get my citizenship at the earliest possibility that I can. They'll sign it, they'll have somebody notarize it, and then they'll make copies of that and include it in any packet that they send to schools. So the reason why I say the TAPS is a little bit more of a longer process to fill out as well is because you have to gather packets for each college that you're applying for and include these TAFSA packets for each school um, versus being able to be on the FAFSA, right, where you can just click the button for the school and it'll send that information for you. You literally have to do the manual work and putting together the packet, filling it out and making sure that the school has everything that they need. Otherwise, that money will not be dis uh, distributed to your student. Uh, last steps for the packet, or sorry, for the TAFSA is going to be to put together these, these mailing packets is what I call them. And this is what it should consist of. So as I promised, I gave you guys the bit.ly down there, Rosa's resources. That'll have the um, affidavit. It'll have copies of the PDFs for the TAFSA in both English and Spanish. Um, and then you're just tasked with filling it out and gathering your tax documents, getting the um, affidavit notarized, right? Um, and then ensuring that everything is there. For the males um, who are TAFSA eligible, you also have to register for selective service. Um, this is a requirement that's changed with the FAFSA this year. Prior to this year, uh, males had to register for selective service in order to receive financial aid. 
um, but that's no longer the case. Um, but for TAFSA, unfortunately, males still have to register for selective service. Um, and you might want to go into the actual selective service website um, because it might give you some issues if you try to do it online because our students who are undocumented typically don't have identification number. Um, and that's one of the things that the selective service asks you for. Um, but if they send it in via paper, that's something that they can kind of override and, and won't need to include. Um, so they will need to include males, will need to include proof that they registered for selective service. That can be a copy of the selective service card that they receive or just a confirmation that the selective service has received their paperwork. Priority deadlines. So this is both for TAFSA and for FAFSA. Um, I always like to use the analogy of the, of the cookie jar. I can tell you, you qualify for two cookies. But if I don't got no cookies in the cookie jar, you're not going to be able to get anything, right? So the priority deadline for TAFSA and FAFSA is January 15th. After that point in time, you can qualify for a full ride to school, right? Potentially, but if they don't have the money there, they're not going to be able to give it to you. And right around the 15th is when that money starts to get dispersed, starts to go out. Um, so it's not a guarantee that you're going to be able to get all that you qualify for if you submit after the 15th. Um, again, it gives you the best shot of getting the most money you qualify for. So October 1st to January 15th, that's a huge window. Um, I know for me, I work as a district employee, so I'm at three different schools throughout the week. I've hosted a FAFSA night at every single campus already. So um, there are opportunities for your students to fill it out. Um, if not, the best bet is reaching out to the advisor. We do have a bunch of resources, how-to videos and things like that. But you do want to make sure that you are making that priority deadline because it, it does make a huge difference. Um, and then verification is something that comes after you submit the FAFSA or the TAFSA. And it's basically what I told you. Schools are going to sometimes ask students to verify their information. Typically, what that's going to be is verifying your income by getting a tax transcript. You can request those via the IRS's website. Um, sometimes students are in a unique position where they're considered independent. Um, college will ask for proof of that independence, right? Court documents, things like that. Um, it just depends. Uh, but schools will communicate with you via two places typically. They're either going to email you to your email that you submitted the application with, or they'll have you create what's called a student portal, um, which is basically like a college version of the hub, and they will communicate with you there about documents that they need um, or any other information they need you to follow up on. All right, and these are all helpful videos, so we can actually skip through these slides. This is a walkthrough video that you guys can um, can scan. Obviously, this, this PowerPoint is going to be available for anybody who wants it, but this is an actual walkthrough from step one to finish how to do the FAFSA. And uh, I should also have some TAFSA here as well. I have a walkthrough video available in English and in Spanish. Um, but please note the TAFSA videos are from last year's TAFSA, but not a lot has changed with the application itself. Aside from the color scheme that they're using for the actual application, pretty much it should be the same. And then uh, I told you I would briefly talk about CSS profile. This is a huge, huge, huge um, task to complete, I guess you could say being candid. Um, it's just like the FAFSA, except they ask you for a lot more information. They ask you for retirement plans. They ask you for any type of investments you have. Um, you name it, anything you have money tied up into, retirement plans, uh, 401ks, they're going to ask for all that. Um, anything that you have uh, in your student's name, like any trust or anything like that, those are also going to go on there as well. Um, so it does require a lot of effort uh, to complete, but even if you make like $200,000, you can still qualify for money with the CSS profile. Now, what's different about CSS compared to FAFSA and TAFSA is that you actually have to pay to send these applications in. So the initial application is $25 to send that very first one, and then Every application after that is $16. So if you have a student who's applying to 15 schools and all of them are CSS profile schools, that might be a conversation that you might want to have with them, right? Um, but CSS profile is, is another good way to get money. This is uh, institution-based money. So this is not coming from the state or not coming from the federal government. It's coming from the school in particular. And that's the reason why they're asking for all that extra information is because they want to make sure that they're providing an adequate supplement to what you need. And then certain colleges, again, are going to ask you to fill it out. Many of these colleges are going to be private schools. A lot of them are considered like state IVs. Um, and then again, like I said, there's a fee for, for having to complete this. And I also provided a CSS walkthrough video for you as well. 
just keep in mind the CSS walkthrough video is about an hour and 15 minutes. So it is long, it is very extensive, but they will do a very good job of giving you what you need for school. Questions? I don't know if we have any I, I have a question. Yep. yep. Is there somewhere that there's some guidance? I, I realize that the um, dollars you get, it's, it's sort of proportional to your need. Correct. So like, is there, you know, is there something if you're trying to estimate for college, if you're making a hundred thousand a year versus two hundred thousand a year, that they can estimate, like, or or does it also directly dependent on the school that you choose? And and if you do, is it a percentage that they try to cover? Yeah. yeah. So the government has a way that they determine the metrics for that. It's called the EFC, which is stands for the expected family contribution. Um, and every school works with a different budget, so it, it really just depends on how much the school has to give out that year. And that would also determine like what type of package you're getting. Like, is your package a lot of grants? Is it a lot of merit-based scholarships? Is it a lot of loans, right? Um, and just based on the finances for the school in any given year, that's gonna dictate like what type of package you get out of it. But it's solely based off of your EFC. Um, and that comes from basically how much money you, you guys are making in any given year. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, is there a priority deadline for CSS as well? Maybe so, you mentioned yeah, that yeah, I missed yes, it. Yes, yes, So uh, each school actually has their own priority deadline through CSS profile. So it's important that you're checking on each of those schools to make sure you're not missing any of those deadlines. Great question. Thank you for reminding me to say that. Yeah, so it's also another huge difference between TAFSA and FAFSA. There's one priority deadline for each of those, which is January 15th. But for CSS profile, each school sets their own deadline. schools like Ryzen, um, a number of others. Is that still the case or has that changed? Um, I, I don't know in particular about certain schools. I know some schools have definitely struggled financially. They have struggled to meet enrollment numbers. So I could assume that those schools probably won't be doing that. But some schools that have a little bit higher traffic in terms of applications might have that extra money. So I would assume like some of the more prestigious like competitive schools probably are going to give better packages and that's just typical like I had a student last year that got a full ride to UPenn you know um so it, it it happens but I think it's more of those selective schools that that do that any other questions are there any questions in the chat no well here's what I'll do um is it okay if I open up this chat box and, and put my email inside of there sure. I'm going to put my email inside of this chat box for you guys um, so that if you guys have any questions, I, I encourage you guys to uh, reach out via email. I try to do a good job of getting back to you guys within a day, but um, because I do work at three schools, sometimes my inbox gets a little crazy. So please be patient. I will definitely get back to you within a 24 hour span, but it just might be later on in the evening. Um, all right, that should be it right there. I appreciate your time. You guys have a fantastic evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosa. We really appreciate you being here and uh, you all know where to find him when you need him. Um, do we have anything else we need to talk about tonight? Okay, if, if you could not hear that, um, Ms. Farrell, who is over in the corner running our technology and doesn't have a microphone, says that Mr. Rosa sends great emails to senior parents and she really appreciates them. She has a senior. Growing up a first generation college, and I just wanna say this real quick, money is very, very important. I send a scholarship newsletter at the beginning of every month. This time it came out a little bit late because we're having some shifts in our department, but please, apply for those scholarships. I spend a lot of time working hard to locate these scholarships so that your students can go to college with as little debt as possible. So please take advantage of those newsletters when you see them come in, okay? Have a good night, guys. Thank you. 
I think that's it for the evening. Uh, we will welcome you back in January. And always in January, speaking of college, we put together a panel of recent Carnegie graduates to talk about their experience at school, what Carnegie prepared them for, what they wish they had known, uh, what they really think of college. So that's always very popular. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. It will probably be in early January rather than the third week of the month so that we can catch as many students as possible before they go back to school. Um, other than that, I think uh, we can call it a night. Thank you all for being here, whether in person or online. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night.